Today I'm going to show you a method for how you can take great book notes. If you're anything like me, you've never really had a good system nailed down. Sometimes I would read books end to end and take no notes. Sometimes I'd be chucking them sporadically into Microsoft OneNote. And other times I would write them on a piece of paper. But in the last two years, I think I've landed on a system that seems to work and it involves two key apps, Readwise and Obsidian. And so today's video is me walking through how to take great notes using these two apps. So step one, get reading. It's pretty obvious. So it doesn't matter if it's paperback, hardback, or your Kindle, just get started reading. In most cases, I personally read on the Kindle. It makes syncing the highlights and the notes that I take seamless to digitally move over to my knowledge management system, which it sits in Obsidian. Step two is about highlighting notes and chapter summaries. So as you're reading, whenever you come across a paragraph that you're learn where you're learning something new or you want to reflect on it and think about the connections, then highlight that relevant sentence or a particularly good quote and move on. Of course, if you're reflecting more deeply or trying to think about connections to other things you've read about or thought about, I will sometimes type out a note to kind of prompt me of what that thought was. So if it's about a connection to topic X, I'll just write topic X. Um, so that when I come to refine my notes later in my knowledge management system, um, I kind of remember what I was thinking about at the time I read it. Now this brings me on to talk about Readwise and where it comes into managing these highlights and notes. So Readwise is a dedicated kind of app and web service for centralizing all your highlights and notes in one place. It basically has connections to everything you can imagine where you'd be reading. So Kindle, Twitter, Instapaper, Pocket, the list goes on. And so it will connect to all of those services and bring in any highlights and notes that you have saved into one handy place. And they have an app to manage that and they have a web app. But the other side of the equation is that they offer the ability to export to many different services, which are typically your note taking or knowledge management apps, of which my choice is Obsidian, and I'll come on to that in a minute. But as you can see, as we scroll through, there are many of the other major tools like Notion, Roam, Evernote, and so on. So whilst today I'm talking about Obsidian, you could in theory be implementing this same process for whatever note-taking app you want to use. Okay, once you're set up with Readwise and uh, getting it to export your notes and highlights to your note-taking app of choice, in my case, Obsidian, then let's jump over and see what it actually looks like once it's exported. So I've opened up Obsidian here, and I'm gonna show you an example book of digital minimalism. And this is pretty much like the raw output of what it looks like when it comes over from Readwise. You'll see it has the book title, a nice front cover, some metadata about the author, the title, and tagging that it's a book. And then in a section, it has pretty much every highlight I took from the book. Now, the other really nice feature of this is it will source the exact location you took the highlight or note from. And so you can actually click it. And if you have the Kindle app open, then you'll see it's take me to the exact page or location of the note that I took, which I think is really handy for if you ever want to uh, write articles or reference and read around the note or highlight, then it's perfect for doing that. Okay, so now you've seen how we set up Read Readwise to get all your highlights, export them to your note-taking service like Obsidian, and what it kind of looks like in raw output, it brings me back to the key final part of step two, which is about chapter summaries. So what you can see in this example I've got on screen in front of you is the highlights are just copy and pasted almost to this note. There's no additional refinement or summarization from my point um, around the topics, which I think is fine if you're just trying to kind of do a light reading. But if you want to crystallize your thoughts, think deeper and try and remember more of what you read. And I think this next step that I suggest will get you to that point. And I'll show you what I do 
by jumping over to Deep Work, which I just reread a couple months ago. And what you'll see is if I scroll down, I'm basically taking notes under each chapter heading. And what you can see is yes, the Kindle highlights via Readwise have been stored in this note, but there's a lot more text around it. And what I've actually done here is basically every time I finish reading a chapter, I'll force myself to put the book down and open up a note taking app. And under the chapter heading, I will write from memory what I just read in, a, in short summary. And I'll reference any key topics that came up. I'll try and summarize what that chapter was about. And the thing I'm trying to leverage here is what's termed uh, active recall or the testing effect. And explaining that is beyond the scope of this video, but there's many good videos out there, particularly like one by Benjamin Keep, who I'll link to um, in the description because his videos are amazing. But in essence, yeah, I'm trying to improve my memory by forcing myself to remember and extract from my brain what I just read about without looking back at my notes, write it down, write the summary. And then once I've done that, I can then fill in the gaps by referencing my quotes and notes, uh, rereading a couple of pages of the book and filling in those gaps. And I think whilst this is somewhat a moderate amount of effort, I think it will pay dividends in terms of crystallizing your own thoughts about what you read, strengthening your memory and thinking more deeply about connections to other things you've read about, linking to them and so on. And it also just helps generally organize the note better because as you saw in the previous page on digital minimalism, it was just a whole long page of quotes and highlights, which is less useful than if I go to my deep work note, you'll see I've got links to other topics, I've got quotes, I've got the chapter subheadings and so on. Um, and it's way, it's going to be way more useful for future if I want to ever come back and kind of get up to speed on what I read about. It's very well organized. Okay, step three is finishing organizing and summarizing the book. So what I described to you just a second ago was that for each chapter, when I finish it, I'll go in, summarize it and organize it a little bit. But that's when you're doing those chapter summaries, you're very focused on what is that specific chapter trying to explain to you or what are you learning from it? When you come to finish the entire book, you come back to this note and you've got useful chapter summaries of each chapter, but you can then think about it in a more wider scope and say, after everything I've read and learnt, what were like the key themes that I'm taking away? What have I learnt? And kind of write that more general summary and link to your other thoughts, ideas, concepts, and so on. And then the second thing I'll do is more um, cosmetic to some degree is I'll fill in additional notes and start linking to themes. So for example, if you scroll through, I would probably have made a concept note for shallow work, for the metric black hole that Cal Newport talks about, about deliberate practice. And I'll start filling in those um, notes so that as I, it comes up in other books and topics in the future, I kind of have this building knowledge base of these con key concepts and ideas that are of interest to me. For me, my, process is about trying to strengthen my memory of what I've read, trying to make some connections between other things I'm reading. And finally, it's about having a growing knowledge base for to easily reference in the future. And that's why I put a bit more emphasis and time into organizing the subheadings and the quotes, you know, for other people, this may be overkill. So, and for certain books for myself, this may be overkill. And it really depends when you begin reading a, a chosen book, you want to think, what am I actually trying to get out of this? Is it just general enjoyment? Then you don't need to do any of this. If it's just, I want to kind of get some nice nuggets of information, some nice quotes, then yeah, just use the highlights. I think that's a key point to note with any of these note taking strategies that are proposed out there, that it's, it's not a one size fits all. It, you kind of need to match your process to what you're trying to achieve. But hopefully this video has been useful in giving you a good structure and 
process for taking great book notes.